Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fast Lane Car Top 5 and today we're talking about the future of your car. Is diesel the future or is diesel not the future? I Andre? think it's the future. That's because you've got that piece of, uh, well... Uh, what? That, what is that thing behind you, Andre? This is my personal 2002 Volkswagen Golf TDI. It's my pride and joy. Dude, you pimped out those lights. <laughs> <laughs> I need to replace them again. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty cool back in uh, the day. The 90s? Yeah, no. yeah, you must have been the man just driving along, just rolling coal. Hey, well, I don't roll that much coal. Hey. Well, behind me is the brand spanking new Jaguar XC. And you know what powers that bad boy? What? It's a two liter four cylinder diesel. Yeah, that's a brand new diesel. It's Ingenium. <laughs> Ingenium? What the hell is Ingenium? That's the name of their diesel. Ingenium? Yeah, it's in, it's genius. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yeah, do you want to look, look at the, under the hood? <laughs> I'll show you, hold on. All right, go, go look under the hood. Ingenium. Ingenium. He's right, it says Ingenium. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's genius, I'm telling you. It's the future. All right, well, Honda has Earth dreams. I guess Jaguar can have <laughs> Ingenium. <laughs> and if Mazda can do Sky Active. Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. What's important about that Jaguar is that it gets, check this out dude, 42 mpg on the highway. That's nothing, my Golf gets 49. It has 180 horsepower, but 318 pound foot of torque, that is that's, huge. That's huge for a small four cylinder engine. Yeah, it's really uh, got that kind of get up and go that you'd want for a sporty car. But you know what, there really is a horse race going on Andre right now, and that horse race is what will power your car. And there are four players, right? Mm -hmm. There are the gasoline engine, the diesel engine, which is a tool we'll be talking about, yep. but coming up from behind quickly is the electric vehicle, yep. and somewhere way in the back is the hydrogen-powered fuel cell electric vehicle. Yep. All right, Andre, let's just cut to the chase and go right to the top five reasons why diesels may or may not be the future. Let's start with fuel efficiency. Obviously, uh, diesels are much more fuel efficient. Yeah, for example, this uh, Jaguar gets 42 mpg on the highway, right? Yeah, 36 combined, which yeah. is really incredible. And if you kind of compare that to the gas version, it blows it out of the water. But there's a more interesting number we can use, and that's a metric, and that is cents per mile. How much does it cost? How many cents per mile? And let's not just compare diesels, but let's compare all the forms okay. of propulsion. So uh, the gas XE gets uh, about 13.3 cents per mile. Yep. What does the um, diesel do? It about half, 6.6 .6 cents a mile. Yeah, that's, you know, a real big jump in terms of how much you're paying to, mm -hmm. you know, go from home to work. Now, let's take the next step. How about a plug-in hybrid? The one that we have here is the BMW 330e. How much does that cost? Yeah, and mile? if you were only using electricity, yeah. no, no fueling up, just, just the plug, it's about 5.6 cents a mile. All right, now let's... So it's a little bit better than a diesel. It is a little bit better than diesel. How about if you go to a pure EV, like the BMW i3? Then it gets really interesting, 3.2 cents a mile. So the pure EV is the cheapest way to go from point A to point B. Basically, yeah. And interestingly, the most expensive way to go from point A to point B is hydrogen. Toyota has a vehicle that does that. Yeah, the Toyota Mirai. Uh, first of all, actually, Toyota will buy you, if you buy the car, yeah. they'll give you three years worth of hydrogen fuel. Yeah, if, but, you, if you can find a place to fuel it up. Yes, it's only in California. But if you were to buy your own fuel, it's around 33 cents a mile, which is like you know, three times more than the gasoline-powered Jaguar and 10 times more than the electric i3. Yeah, it's a really interesting horse race because the Japanese obviously don't make any diesels, at least not here in America. Mm -hmm. They make them, but they don't sell them here. And so both Toyota and Honda have kind of put a lot of their money on hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Now, the European car makers, of course, do make diesels and they do sell them here. So I'm thinking about Mercedes, I'm thinking about BMW, and I'm thinking about Range Rover and Jaguar. Yeah. So they've kind of staked their claim on diesel. Uh, and, of course, the Japanese, in terms of Toyota, have also gone fully hybrid. Yep. So it's, it's an, you know, an interesting horse race that's happening right now. Uh, so let's go to number four. Um, what about acceleration? Acceleration, well, one of the reasons why I originally bought the Golf TDI was that off-the-line acceleration. You, you got so much torque down low. Yeah, but then it falls off a cliff. Yeah, it does. Yeah, unfortunately, about 45 miles an hour, the acceleration kind of slows down. Yeah, you know, diesel cars are really great for having a lot of torque, obviously, and that torque, you know, torque is what cars use to accelerate. Uh, 
horsepower is what they use to get to the top end. So, yep. you know, most of your time is spent accelerating, not doing around town. Yeah. yeah, not doing top end speed. So acceleration is a good uh, reason to have a diesel, but it's also a good reason to have a car because a small turbocharged engine will not fall off a cliff. It'll just, you know, maybe you won't have that initial rush, that wave of power, but it'll just keep going and keep going and keep going. Of course, an electric car has a lot of torque, right? Electric motor. Yeah, electric but motor has even more how torque. How far can you go? Yeah. That's a future point we can discuss. Yeah, the compliance cars installed in California are about 100 miles, and we proved, I think the market has proved, that people aren't ready to go electric if they, only, if they can only go about 100 miles. I think you need to go a lot farther than that. Like a Tesla, you know, 200 yep. to 250. All right, how about initial price? Initial Number price. Three. Well, this is a small issue, but for example, for the Jaguar XC, if you were to choose the diesel engine over a gas engine, it's about $1,500 difference. Yeah, so if you're a fan of diesel, it's a small issue. If you're not, <laughs> it's a big issue. But that is also changing. Mercedes actually made their big SUV, the GL, yeah. the entry version with the diesel. So uh, they've okay. priced the diesel below the gasoline. And I think that is in direct response to what happened with the whole VW debacle. Yeah, that's really interesting. But in general, and also in trucks, you do have to pay up front to get a diesel. And the reason for that is diesel engines are heavier because, um, well, they produce more torque, so they have more power, so they need to be heavier, so they use more metal. There's probably a little bit more technology in the modern diesel, especially the turbocharged diesel. Well, especially cleaning the emissions. There's a lot of cost in those systems. So it's really kind of telling that Mercedes is actually making their entry level uh, be the diesel because it's costing them money basically subsidizing the car so that they can get diesel into the American market. All right, let's talk about reliability and longevity. I think this one goes over to you. <laughs> yeah, so this is a 2002 Golf TDI. Yeah, yeah. It has about 193,000 miles on it. Yeah. And there's only one thing that went wrong with it in the last 14 years, uh, glow plugs. Yeah. So I had to replace glow plugs, but the car never let me down. And part of this, I mean, if we were to generalize this, right, we're not just talking about TDIs, yeah. but also the Jaguar and other vehicles. But if you were to generalize, you know, it's a high compression engine, like you said, it's heavier, it's more, you know, well built with more material there. Um, so in general, um, you're also running at lower RPMs. You don't have to rev your diesel. Actually, red line is a lot lower. So because of all those things, engines do last longer. Yeah, uh, but they're also expensive to maintain. You know that in your truck, you just had to replace yeah. all the injectors. And that was a big deal. Yeah, well, once they break, you have to have more of a specialized mechanic and the parts are more expensive and the labor is more expensive. So it's kind of a wash because they're, um, sure, they last longer, but then you gotta put a lot more money into them over the long run. That's gonna be true. And of course, the number one reason that gasoline or electricity or even hydrogen is better than diesel is because, well, that thing smokes like one of those German Rauker dudes. No, 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 <laughs> my, my, my diesel, well, first of all, it's not involved in a scandal. And it it's, doesn't smoke that much. It does, I've been behind that thing. It Actually, smokes. it's a little smelly. <laughs> yeah, 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 you Europeans know what I'm talking about. That's why Paris banned diesels from the central city. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the old diesels are very dirty. Um, and of course, uh, they're under a lot more regulations now. So there's a lot of pollution regulations, both not just in America, but also in Europe. Yeah, and electric cars, obviously, there's zero emissions, right? But the question is, you know, how is that electricity made? You know, like in terms of hydrogen, how do you develop, you know, the you cost, know how do you extract you, yeah, the hydrogen? You're, yeah, you're moving the, the, the cost and the pollution down, or actually upstream from where yeah. the car is. So instead of Into actually, the factory or, yeah. you know, whatever produces the electricity. Yeah, and I would also say, Andre, that uh, the reason diesels aren't probably the future is because um, oil is such a very useful commodity, right? You make plastic out of it, and it's just a shame to burn it. <laughs> right? <But> it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a finite resource, and once it runs out, it runs yeah. out. So why are we just, you know, burning it and filling up our uh, air and our environment with diesel particulates? Well, here's an answer. Here's an answer for you. If you're an urban dweller, yeah. you know, you don't live in a big city, or if you're a traveling salesman, you know, where you have to go long distances in your car, the diesel cars eat up miles like no other car. I mean, this car has over 550 miles of range. Yes. So you can go from here to Albuquerque and everywhere else, and it's really you know easy on the highway. So it's almost you know two ends of the same spectrum, right? A diesel car has a lot of range, but potentially is very dirty. And I know you guys are saying modern diesels use uh, 
DEF fluid and clean themselves up. But I keep wondering what happens like five years from now or ten years from now when that uh, DEF system goes haywire and the local mechanic decides that it's a lot cheaper just to disconnect it. And you get a lot more power when you do it. Well, yeah, and it's also regulatory issues with that. You know, EPA says you cannot bypass your, you know, um, particulate filters and, you know, yeah, but you know how that is. Yeah, ten years yeah. from now, there's a lot of dudes out there rolling coal with their trucks who have bypassed or eliminated or deleted their yeah, that's true. <laughs> their pollution. That's true. So, so diesel is, you know, you get a lot of range and you get a lot of pollution with electricity. You get a lot less pollution, but you don't get a lot of range, and that's really um, the horse race, right? Mm -hmm. Which one of those will win? If you had to put your money today on one of these types of uh, uh, propulsions, what would you pick? Well, I think actually my belief in diesels has been shaken recently. Yeah. I have to be honest. Because more and more people are moving into the big cities, right? The population of big cities are growing. It's really easy to move around a big city in an electric car. You know, you don't go very far. Um, it's easy to charge. So 20 years in the future, I think the electric cars will really win. Yeah, you know, it's probably going to be a mixed basket of all four. I'm really kind of the most fascinated by what Toyota and Honda are doing, right? The new Clarity is coming out now, uh, which is their hydrogen-powered car. Right. Uh, and um, Toyota is the world's largest auto manufacturer. They sell the most cars. And, you know, when they put their stake on hydrogen, when they put their money down on hydrogen, it means something. I think they're right now something like 21 non-commercial hydrogen stations in California. So um, it's very... It's early days. It's early days. I, yeah. I, and to date, I think Toyota has sold right around 800 units of their hydrogen-powered car. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's the future. Plus, both, in my opinion, the Toyota and the Honda aren't the best-looking cars. It doesn't help when you've got these kind of ugly duckling cars. No, they're <laughs> supposed to be futuristic, but they're not great lookers, in my opinion, either. Right. And, and the, and the good-looking car that is getting general acceptance and has a lot of buzz around it is, of course, uh, the Tesla, both the Model S, the Model uh, X, and upcoming Model 3. And also the Chevy Bolt. It's Chevy not Bolt. a bad looking car and it has over, you know, 238 miles of range, they said. So I, I think in um, automotive applications, not trucks, I think you're right. I think electricity is where it's going. Um, you know, if, if you had to put your money down, I would put it also on electricity. I think with gasoline, it's still going to be around, right? People still love gas cars. They, they're used to that sound, the smell, the fun of it. Uh, but at some point, um, maybe the next generation or maybe the current new generation, they're going to uh, grow up on electric cars. And um, yeah, I think it's, they're quiet, they're clean, um, and they're going to get less expensive. Uh, trucks is a different story. I think diesel trucks will stay around for a long time, so don't worry. We're doing a lot more with um, kind of the future and the uh, uh, coming of new technology, especially on TFL Now. Uh, so check out the videos that we have on TFL Now where we talk about um, what's happening with electric cars. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Anton Wallman, who mm -hmm. uh, has become kind of an expert in this area, uh, has a lot of interesting thoughts about really where it's going. And, and he's kind of more of an analyst, so he looks at it from kind of the business point of view. Yeah. Uh, so check out those videos. And guys, if you have any ideas or comments that you want, uh, to let the rest of the world know, just put them below because we always read your comments. And of course, Andre, they can't forget this, right? Um, if you want to subscribe, just click. Where do we put the thing? Where, where are we going to put it? You know, it's going to be here. Okay, we'll put it in the lower area. area. Yeah, so subscribe over here. <laughs> and you know that video about electric cars? Where do we put that? Where do you want to put that? Uh, how about in the between us? This is going to be the video in between us? Yes. All right. How about that? All right. So down here will be the subscribe button. And here, <laughs> here will be here the, the other video. The EV. So you can just click on that and check that out right now. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Roman. And Andre. Saying, see you next time. Ciao.